So the legal services delivery, including legal aid, has to have, it cannot be left entirely to the judiciary. Now, judiciary is managing the whole show of legal aid in this country. There must be institutional change and bar association can. And the last thing I want to suggest at this occasion is please think about continuing education as a mandatory requirement for the legal profession to hold its uh, license to practice. How should it be organized? We have some experiments that are going on. I am involved with one such uh, experiment sponsored by the Bar Council of India and one of your recipients of a, an award today is uh, the key person involved, Mr. K. K. Venugopal, who has financed the Kerala Bar Council to set up an academy in the name of a constitutional lawyer of Esther years, M. K. Nambiar. So MK Nambiar Academy for Continuing Legal Education is having two flagship programs, both of which must be taken over as babies of the Bar Association of India. Because if you demonstrate how to institutionalize continuing education, that how it gives value to the advocates practicing at different levels in different areas of legal practice, then there will be demand for it then of course it is all right to make it mandatory as is being done in several other jurisdictions. It is very much needed in our country. Particularly if you go to the district, you will find that lack of this continuing education. Even the developments in law are not familiar. They are unable to use the uh, digital ways. How do they operate in the e-courts that we are contemplating? So there is a whole revolution need to take place on which a leadership role has to be taken which Bar Council, I don't think, will be able to take, even if it is modified. But Bar Association of India, yes, it can. And you have so many chapters spread over in different states. In association with the law schools, you will be able to give a push. On this occasion, I think it should be welcomed by the government also, both at the centre and the states. And it would happen if ideas are presented in a manner that is viable for implementation, even if responsibility is taken over by the profession or the bar association. And last but not the least, I am delighted to be associated because uh, for long, law teachers were not recognized by anybody in this country. But it is the Society of Indian Law Firms of which uh, Lalit Basin is the key figure, who came forward about 10 years ago to recognize the contribution of law teachers in shaping the, so therefore, and he, he invented a law teacher's day, uh, coinciding with the teacher's day in the first week of September. And consistently we have been recognizing the contribution of teachers in teaching, research, legal services and the rest, not only of India, but to the entire SARC countries. He has awarded to a teacher in Bangladesh who later became the chairman of the National Human Rights Commission, a teacher in Bangladesh, similarly in Nepal. So this process has uh, brought together uh, the legal fraternity, uh, not only of this country, because everybody is looking towards Indian legal profession. And we are not prepared to give the leadership to the profession in Nepal or Bhutan, and thing, in spite of SARC law existing. It has not touched. Many people do not know what is that SARC Law Association. Whereas Bar Association of India is known to the people at all levels. If ideas can be given, there are people who would like to contribute and would make it as a movement in the legal profession to influence the country and its policies at a very critical stage in which the country is passing through. So I am indebted to Mr. Lalit Bhasin and the Society of Indian Law Firms for this contribution which has given a push to the legal education in this country which has been happening uh, recent times. In fact, uh, the society has got into a deal with an, a prestigious American law school which says that the two students selected as the best law student of the year for which uh, he gives awards to the students also, not only to teachers. Those two students will receive $50,000 each for admission and study in that one prestigious... Male hmm? one, male. One, one male and one female. From this year, 
they will have this admission and fellowship for pursuit of higher studies in one of the leading law schools in the United States. All this is uh, really creating such an interest among law students, not only of these national law schools, but many other law schools which are now struggling to come up to the standards of the national law school. Can you believe that for about 2,000 seats available in 20 national law schools, the applicants who are taking the CLAT examination is now 47,000. What a dramatic change. And these are the students who can walk into any engineering college or IIT or a medical school. Why are they coming to law? So the revolution is taking place. Give them leadership. Bar Association of India, come forward. I wish all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Menon. Your words will be the guiding principle for us in our activities. I now request our Honorary General Secretary, Mr. Yake Shanan, who has also worked very hard in making this event possible to please come and take the proceedings further, the glamour part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Respected Professor Mother Menon, Mr. Anil Devan, Mr. Soli Sarabji, Mr. Ashok Desai, Mr. RKB Shankar Das, Deepankar Gupta, Mr. Dr. Lalit Basin, Prashant, my friends from Executive Committee and Governing Council of Bar Association of India, other fellow lawyer colleagues. I am honored to introduce our Board of Advisors of Bar Association of India, namely Mr. K. Parasaran, Mr. Fali S. Nariman, Mr. Anil Divan, Mr. R. K. P. Shankar Das, Mr. Soli Swarabji, Mr. Ashok Desai, Mr. K. K. Venu Gopal, Mr. Dipankar Gupta, and Mr. Hari Salve. Can I introduce, ask my colleague Anandita to announce the credentials of Mr. Soli Swarabji? Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Soli J. Surabji, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India. Mr. Surabji is an eminent Indian jurist and former Attorney General for India. He has been honored with Padma Bibhushan for his defense of the freedom of expression and protection of human rights. Mr. Surabji has held several offices in organization of national and international repute. He has studied in Government Law College, Mumbai, he was admitted to the bar in the year 1953. In 1971, Mr. Sorabji was designated as Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court of India. He served as Solicitor General of India from 1977 to 1980. He worked on the Citizens Justice Committee, which represented pro bono the 1984 anti-Sikh riot victims. In March 2006, he was appointed an honorary member of the Order of Australia for the service to Australia-India bilateral legal relations. He is the chairman of Transparency International and convener of the Minority Rights Group. He has served as a special rapporteur to the United Nations Human Rights Commission since 1997. A member of the United Nations Subcommission on Prevention of Discrimination and Protection of Minorities since 1998. Mr. Suraji has served as a member of the Permanent Court of Arbitration at The Hague. Mr. Sorabji is also the President of the United Lawyers Association, Vice President of the Human Rights Committee of the International Bar Association, Vice President of the Commonwealth Lawyers Association, Executive Committee Member of the International Association of Constitutional Lawyers, and Member of the Committee on Arms Control and Disarmament Law of the International Law Association. Anindita is a joint editor of in the uh, magazine Indian Advocate. Now can I request the Honorable Chief, Just, uh, Chief Guest, Mr. Madhav Menon and Mr. Soris Abji, Dr. Basin, to come on the stage. Yeah.
a little problem with my throat. So when people said, I'll give voice to the voiceless, I know what it means. <laughs> and I wish I get that. Well, all I want to say is I'm really honored at what I've been given. And one thing I want to say is, is we should never forget that the law is a service-oriented profession. It's not a commercial venture. We don't work under laws of demand and supply. And essentially, though the public perception may not be good, but in many of the matters, important matters, like example, under trial prisoners, bonded laborers, is lawyers who appeared and appeared pro bono. And I think that spirit should always be maintained and we should resist the commercialization which is taking place of the profession. I think I've spoken, spoken quite a bit. If I speak more, I'll completely lose my voice. So <laughs> I'll say thank you very much and all the best. I request my friend and colleague Nandini Gore, who is also looking after the women's section of the Bar Association of India, to honor Mr. Ashok Desai. Chairperson. Chairperson. To honor Mr. Ashok Desai, please. Good evening, friends. Uh, Mr. Ashok Desai is a senior advocate uh, practicing in the Supreme Court of India. He held office as Attorney General of India from 9 July 1996 to 6th of May 1998. Earlier, he was the Solicitor General of India from 18th December 1989 to 2nd December 1990. He was awarded the Padma Bhushan Award and the Law Luminary Award in 2001. He was awarded Degree of Doctor of Law Honours in recognition of his contribution to the field of law and jurisprudence by the North Orissa University on 14th of September 2009. Some of the distinguished cases which he has dealt are Antule case in which cement was distributed by the chief minister to builders who happened to give donation to Indira Gandhi Pratisthan. Justice Lentin found that these were quite pro Echo and held that the administration was accountable even when it extracted donation for a public trust. The chief minister had to resign from his office promptly. Thereafter, he has also participated and given and rendered his services in the matter called Nandini Sundaram in Supreme Court. Considering the grievance of tribal population who were caught in the crossfire between Nexalized and vigilant group supported by the state. The court gave extensive relief, including of ordering investigation. It held that the appointment of tribal youth with little education as special police officers engaged in counterinsurgency activities is violative of Article 14 and Article 21 of the Constitution of India. Mr. Desai was the chairman of the Committee of Administrative Law of International Bar Association in 1986 till 88 and consulted to the Commonwealth Workshop on Administrative Law at Lusaka, Zambia in 1990. In 1997, he presented India's report to the United Nations Committee on Human Rights in Geneva. In 1997, he represented India at WTO appellate body in a patent litigation filed by United States against India. In 1998, he led the Indian delegation to the United Nations Preparatory Committee on Money Laundering Bill in Vienna. Mr. Desai is the Vice President of the Bar Association of India and President of Inns of Court India Society. Mr. Ashok Desai, please.
Just a word of thanks, when you receive an honor of this type at the end of a long career, you feel that you're being given some sort of a hint. <laughs> but, <laughs> but let me say I will continue to work in the present uh, uh, as I can in the service of the profession and ensure that it remains a profession and doesn't become a trade. But Thank you. The end of the <laughs> So, uh, just in this season of demonetization, <laughs> I must say that, you know, you are our legal tenders who are all legal tenders beyond the age of 80 and will remain so forever. You can never be demonetized. <laughs> Thank you. Friends, next uh, and the most eminent member of our Board of Advisors is Ms. Anil Divan. Mr. Devan has been a former president of Bar Association of India for 2010 to 2014. He's been a former president of Law Asia from 1991 to 1993. Mr. Devan is an eminent constitutional expert and has been appointed as a Micah's Curie by the Honorable Supreme Court of India in various public interest litigations involving high level politi politi political and bureaucratic corruption cases at central level. In 1980, Mr. Devan, as one of the founders of Center for Public Interest Litigation, had conducted many, uh, many litigation matters on public interest. Mr. Devan has been member of a Committee of Water Resources Laws of International Law Association. He has been appointed by the government to resolve interstate water dispute. Mr. Devan's book, On the Front Foot, an insight on writings on courts, press, and personalities, has been very well accepted by the bar members. He has contributed many papers in many international conferences. I had personal opportunity of going overseas and attending international conferences with Mr. Divan and Mrs. Divan. Can I request my friend, Mr. sorry, Dr. Basin, Mr. and our chief guest to come again and honor Mr. Anil Divan. Friends, thank you very much. I am delighted to be here today. And uh, as you must have noticed, most of the members of the Board of Advisors are in their 80s. And it is said that a lawyer, an old lawyer never retires. He only loses his appeal. So with that, I thank once more the organizers of this function, and I thank you all for being here and honoring us today. Thank you.
Mr. Dipanka Gupta, born on 27th February 1934, Mr. Gupta was educated at St. Xavier College School, Calcutta, and passed the senior Cambridge school leaving examination in 1948. He then joined St. Xavier College, Calcutta, and graduated with the first class honors in physics, having secured the second place in the Calcutta University. He joined London's in London in January 1953 and was called to the English bar by the inn on 10th of May 1955. Soon thereafter, he joined the Calcutta High Court and started practicing there. In 1972, he was designated as senior advocate under the Advocates Act. He was a senior standing counsel for the government of West Bengal from 1972 to 76 and the Advocate General of West Bengal till 1977. He was appointed at the Solicitor General of India in April 1992 and occupied the position till July 1996. He then resigned with the change in the government. Mr. Gupta was a member of the Chief Justice of India's team in several legal exchange programs with, within United Kingdom and United States of America and Canada. He has co-authored the section on arbitration law in the Halsbury Law of India. He is often invited to speak in seminar and conferences on legal topics, and several of his writings have been published in journals and in print media. He now practices as Supreme Court advocate, and he is one of the most distinguished senior advocates in Supreme Court of India. He is also appearing in many high courts and tribunals. He practices constitution law and administrative law, and his fortes are constitution law, administration law, arbitration, property and tax law, amongst other subjects on the civil sides. He has appeared in several international arbitration matters. Mr. Dipankar Gupta, senior advocate. Uh, friends, uh, it's a great honor to be made a member of the advisory committee, uh, advisory board of the Bar Association of India. Just one remark <coughs> about uh, the, my career. I was appointed as the Advocate General of West Bengal by Mr. Siddharth Shankar Ray in the year 1976. I believe in December, or November or December. And uh, soon after I uh, was appointed the Advocate General, Mr. Siddharth Shankar Ray for other political reasons, uh, was about to resign. Now there is a room in the High Court where the names of all the um, Advocates General are mentioned uh, by year to year. Now there were stalwarts in the High Court whose uh, tenure uh, sometimes it's 20 years, sometimes 15 years, sometimes 25 years, and so on. So when I became the Advocate General, 
my name was written there, Advocate General, 1976, dash. <laughs> because everybody expected that Mr. Siddhartha Shankar Ray would resign very soon. In, in fact, he resigned in January, 1977. And in that board, even today, my name appears as the Advocate General 1976-77. So that made me very happy. Thank you very much. Friends. Mr. Shankar Das, R.K.P. Shankar Das. He is an alumni of Trinity College, Cambridge. He was called to the bar at Lincoln's Inn. After spending few years in Kol Kolkata on a corporate assignment, he started practicing in Delhi in 1961. Mr. Shankar Das has been an executive committee member of Bar Association of India since 1963, for many years as general secretary, then as vice president and has been President of Bar Association of India from 2014 to 2016. Mr. Shankar Das has been the first Indian to be President of International Bar Association from 1986 to 1988. <laughs> He's Fellow of American Bar Foundation, Vice President of Indian Society of International Law, Member of Governing Council for Policy Research since 2008. Mr. Shankar Das has been counsel to the Government of India on several international disputes. He has been counsel for State of, of Qatar before International <coughs> Court of Justice at Hague and a commissioner and panel chairman under UN Compensation Commission for adjudicating work claims. Mr. Shankar Das, please come. I mean, it's a bill. Just to say how honored I feel at, at, at this distinction being given to me, uh, and just to say that I have, I'm the youngest, even in my 80s, I'm the youngest member of the Board of Advisors, <laughs> and will and will need a lot of encouragement to be useful. Thank you. <laughs> The so next Board of Advisor, Mr. K. Parasran, uh, former Attorney General of India, he is not present today. Can I request Mr. V. Bala Chandran to please? Mr. Parasran had, had, has been earlier an Advocate General of Tamil Nadu and Attorney General of India. He represented former Prime Ministers, Mrs. Indira Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi. Mr. Parasran was awarded the Padma Bhushna in 2003 and Padma Vibhushna in 2011. In 2012, he, was, he received a presidential nomination to Rajya Sabha, the Upper House of Parliament. He has appeared and argued several cases of constitutional importance before the Supreme Court of India. He is one of the most eminent and respected